Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome for to a new session from uh, film uh, spotter cases. And uh, uh, it, today's session, we will discuss uh, some uh, interesting cases, and a few of them are uh, difficult one. So uh, I will present the cases as usual in the form of uh, uh, exam. And at the end of the session, we will discuss these cases together.
Okay, everyone. I hope they were um, good cases, and let's discuss them. Okay, this is the first case. Here we can uh, see uh, a, a, a hypotenusty, uh, a large hypotenusty involving both circular hemispheres. This is the large hypotenusty involving multiple areas of hypotenusty involving the both circular hemispheres. Also involving the whole uh, circumference of the brainstem, and in these superior sections, we can see there is a hypotenusy involving the right occipital loop, and also uh, the anterior aspect of uh, the thalamus. Uh, these hypotenusy are characteristic for the distribution or the territory of uh, the basilar artery, actually. Uh, because as we know the basilar the art supply most of the cerebellum and gives branches supplying the uh, uh, the bones or brain stem and also uh, gives a uh, posterior cerebral artery that supply the uh, uh, occipital loop and give thalamus perforating branches that supply part of the thalamus so all these distribution are characteristic of the basilar artery uh, uh, and uh, infarction and if we see here, uh, the, this is the basilar artery. In this non-contrast study, we can see that the basilar artery is uh, hyperdense. So this is an example for uh, the uh, uh, hyperdense visit sign, which is a representing of an acute uh, 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 infarction or acute thrombosis of uh, the basilar artery. It is uh, commonly to be seen or more familiar to be seen in the MCA which is called MCA dense sign here it is uh, uh, occurring in the basilar artery and it is uh, called basilar artery dense sign similar to the MCA dense sign it is the same the mechanism and same uh, phenomena uh, in the acute thrombosis the basilar artery or the artery become hyperdense in non-contrast CT and we can see also the distribution here uh, of the basilar artery territory supplying the serpillar hemisphere most of the brainstem and also the occipital loop and uh, the uh, part of the serpillum these are branches of the basilar artery so this is an a typical case for uh, acute basilar artery thrombosis and infarction in here in this case number two we can typical we can see here the typical example for uh, the uh, root uh, tear in which there is a uh, effect in uh, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus near to uh, the root attachment this is uh, the defect uh, sign or defect uh, crypt sign that is seen in uh, the radial tear if the radial tear occurring in uh, near to the root attachment this is called a uh, root uh, uh, tear and here in the sister image we can see here this is disappearance of the meniscus which is called ghost meniscal sign and again this is one of the characteristic of the radial tear if the radial tear occurring near to uh, the root attachment this is called a, re, uh, a root tear because uh, the root tear is actually is an example for the radial tear and we can see here also there is a uh, extrusion this is the body of the uh, of the misc of the of uh, the medial meniscus that is extruded extend beyond the margin of uh, the uh, uh, the margin of uh, the uh, tibia plateau so this is a uh, uh, meniscal extrusion and again this is one of uh, the complication that usually occur with uh, the uh, root tear or radial tear because the radial tear usually disrupt the uh, 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 the fibers of the meniscus and uh, makes the meniscus uh, floppy and it usually extruded like this so this is an example for uh, the uh, root tear associated with uh, 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 exclusion of uh, the meniscal body uh, involving the uh, medial meniscus in here in this uh, case number three there is actually multiple finding and you uh, should mention uh, all of these finding uh, these finding uh, uh, in uh, summarize in uh, a low level or low lying of uh, the cord which is called uh, 
tethered cord so there is a tethering of the cord and here we can see the cause of this tethering which is a uh, diastomatomyelia or split cord malformation we can see that uh, there is a spur formation that is dividing the cord into two halves so this is a diastomatomyelia associated with a tethered cord and also we can see there is here uh, some sort of slippage of uh, the l5 over s1 and also we can see here that there is a uh, some sort of segmentation failure or partial fusion of L3 and L4 uh, L4 and L3 uh, yes, vertebrae in which there is a rudimentary rudimentation of uh, the uh, intervening disc space and also there is a fusion of the posterior neural element of both vertebrae so there is here there is a multiple finding there is a tethered core there is a diastomatomyelia there is a uh, segmentation partial segmentation failure of l3 and l4 and also there is a slippage of l5 uh, vertebrae in this case it is a child that have an area of consolidation involving uh, the uh, left lower loop and we can clearly see this area of consolidation is uh, traversed by a large uh, uh, vascular structure this large vascular structure is uh, apparently seen arising from uh, the abdominal aorta so uh, this is a, a typical example for the pulmonary, pulmonary sequestration once you see an area of consolidation or area of mass lesion that is seen supplied by a branch from the abdominal aorta or from the uh, from the aorta you should uh, say this is a, a pulmonary sequestration pulmonary sequestration you diagnose pulmonary se se sequestration once you see a consolidation or mass in the lungs that is supplied by a branch from the aorta this is a pulmonary sequestration to, to differentiate between if it is an intrapulmonary or extrapulmonary we can see here in this uh, last image that is uh, the mass lesion or the areas of consolidation is drained by uh, branches from hypertrophied branches from uh, the pulmonary veins so this is an example for uh, the intrapulmonary uh, sequestration because uh, the other type which is called extrapulmonary usually drained by systemic veins not the pulmonary veins this is one of the point differentiating point between the intrapulmonary and the extrapulmonary so uh, and what's one of the important uh, uh, differentiating point so this is an example for uh, the intrapulmonary left lower loop intrapulmonary uh, uh, lung sequestration in this child here in this case we can see uh, multiple cystic lesions that are scattered through all the parenchyma cerebral parenchyma either intraaxial or extraaxial and also in the interventricular uh, in location these cystic lesions small cystic lesion that exhibit some sort of small dot sign within small dot within and in this CT, we can see also complementary CT. We can see, clearly see also the cystic lesion with the dot inside, which is a typical example for neurocyst sarcosis. This is uh, the neurocyst sarcosis. When you can clearly say this is a neurocyst sarcosis once you see uh, a multiple cystic lesions with a small dot inside. This is a characteristic for neurocyst sarcosis, and as seen here or as shown here in uh, the x in uh, the images we can see that uh, the neurocystic causes involve uh, uh, multiple uh, locations it can involve uh, the uh, thalamus the, the basal ganglia uh, the white matter and uh, the ventricular system and also the extra axial spaces can be involved any place from uh, the intraventricular to the extra axial systems so this is uh, the typical example for the neurocyst sarcosis once you see a cystic lesion with a small dot sign this is a typical for the neurocyst sarcosis and here in this case it is actually a typical case for uh, the mass lesion involving the uh, uh, the maxillary antrum and uh, the osteomutal unit which is showing the characteristic gyriform pattern or cerebriform pattern which is uh, typical for uh, the inverted papilloma if you see here this lesion if you can depict that you can see here this is uh, uh, similar to the gyri of the brain this is a uh, pattern is uh, typical for the 
invert papilloma and this is the site for typical for invert papilloma which is usually centered upon the osteomyotal unit and usually uh, extend into the maxillary antrum in these post contrast images we can see also the alternating layer between enhancing and non enhancing which is uh, representing convoluted or cerebriform pattern which is typical for invert papilloma so this is a typical case for left maxillary antrum uh, invert papilloma in this case which is one of the sample case uh, here we can see that there is a uh, a lesion that is uh, fairly defined, well defined, and it is a, 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 a broad uh, dural base attachment, and it is markedly in, indenting the cervical medullary junction and taking in the post contrast images homogeneous enhancement with dural tail. All these features are keeping with an a meningioma, but the location here is important because it is in the cervical medullary junction, and as we see here, there is a marked indentation of uh, the uh, upper part of the cervical cord and lower part of the medulla, and this is very significant because uh, the location of this mass is uh, important because it is compressing upon uh, the important uh, vital centers like respiratory centers and heart centers so this is an example for uh, the cervical medullary junction i mean uh, meningioma meningioma as we know it occurs at any place or any location in uh, the brain uh, and the spinal cord and this is one of the important and uh, bad prognosis uh, of uh, the uh, meningioma Okay, in this case, we can see here there is an area of abnormal signal that is involving the posterior horn of this meniscus. This area of abnormal signal actually it is uh, similar to the bone. If we can see here, this is the area that is similar to the bone in the T1 weighted images, and in the stair, the area is suppressed. This is the meniscus, and the area within is suppressed in the stair, so it is similar to the bone. And in the X-ray, we can see here there is a triangular uh, uh, bony structures seen at the same location of this lesion. So this is an example for meniscal ossicle. Meniscal ossicle, it is a, an important differential diagnosis for uh, the meniscal tear because it is ha appear as a high signal in broad density and T1 weighted images. So uh, it is can be mistaken with a uh, meniscal uh, tear but it is signal is similar to uh, the bone in all sequences so this is differ in uh, the uh, than uh, the i will differentiate it with a meniscal tear because the meniscal tear is not suppressed in the stair or in the fat set images so this is uh, uh, if the signal is similar to the bone this is a, a meniscal oscule and if you have an x-ray or ct it will be better to be appreciated in these images Okay, in this example, we can see here there is a, 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 a abnormal signal involving the uh, ulnar nerve in the cubital tunnel. We can see here this is the ulnar nerve and it is swollen and it is high, showing a high signal. And if we see here, there is an overlying accessory muscle. This is not a, a normal structure. It is usually not present. Usually the ulnar, nor, ulnar nerve is not covering by uh, such structure. And if we see here, this is uh, the triceps and this is uh, the abnormal muscle. This is a typical example for uh, the accessory anconius muscle. Actually, this is uh, 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 example for the ulnar neuropathy secondary to presence of accessory accessory anconius muscle. This muscle is an accessory muscle. And this is one of the importance of uh, radiology in role in ulnar neuropathy because the ulnar neuropathy usually is uh, uh, clinically diagnosed and uh, they send uh, uh, the patient for detection of any causes or any underlying causes that can cause this ulnar neuropathy in this patient the cause here is uh, the accessory accessory anconius muscle this muscle is accessory and usually not present uh, uh, in uh, most of the individuals, it's normal variant, uh, and uh, in this patient causing uh, entrapment of the nerve and causing ulnar nerve neuropathy. In this case, case number ten, we can see clearly see that there is a well-defined cystic lesion that have a wall appearance and also that have an air fluid level. This is actually 
uh, an example for uh, the abscess formation in these locations which is uh, uh, segment uh, uh, 5 or segment uh, 4b and 5 and also extending into the gold bladder fossa this is patient uh, uh, after cholecystectomy comes with a fever high grade fever so this is an example for gold bladder fossa and hepatic abscess uh, by uh, the typical uh, appearance of uh, the abscess showing wall formations and also air fluid level once you see a lesion in the uh, liver showing an air fluid level you should uh, think about uh, abscess formation in this patient it was a complication of a cholecystectomy uh, here there is an interesting finding also that usually uh, associated with abscess formation that the presence of we can see here that the area surrounding uh, the abscess is usually showing uh, enhancement at the arterial phase this is called perfusion enhancement and this is usually accompanied with uh, the uh, or accompanying the inflammatory process like abscess so this is a, a interesting sign interesting uh, finding seen associated with uh, the abscess formation so this is a uh, gold bladder fossa and uh, uh, segment four five uh, hepatic uh, abscesses Okay, this is uh, uh, this in this child we can see there is a well-defined cystic lesion that's seen uh, at a typical uh, location uh, of uh, the bronchogenic cyst, in which it is uh, located usually at the level of the carina. So this is cystic lesion in a child with a typical location. This is old characteristic for bronchogenic cyst. It does not show a wall like a uh, uh, definite wall because this is uh, differentiate the bronchogenic from uh, the neuroenteric cyst which usually have a, a well-defined wall and the content usually higher in intensity in the bronchogenic cyst and usually in a posterior location in uh, 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 bronchogenic cyst usually anterior in location usually it is seen at the level of the carina and usually have uh, a no definite wall and the content usually is a high potency okay this is an example for uh, the uh, uh, secular aneurysms these secular aneurysms are seen uh, with uh, uh, at the level of uh, the proximal thigh region we can see here these secular aneurysms are surrounded by a hematoma formations so this clearly not a uh, true aneurysms they are a pseudo aneurysms because if the wall is irregular like this and if it is surrounded by hematoma this is not true wall so this is an example for the pseudo aneurysm we can clearly see the importance here or the interesting here that uh, the origin of these pseudo aneurysms is not from the superficial femoral artery which is usually encountered but it is from uh, the this artery which is uh, the profunda femoris artery we can see here that this is the artery and this is the site of the extra position of the contrast here and here so this is an example for uh, the uh, pseudo aneurysm from uh, the profunda femoris artery not from the superficial femoral artery it is uh, from the uh, uh, profunda femoris artery and usually it is a uh, post traumatic uh, as well in this case we can see here that there is a broad uh, uh, configuration of the skull the skull is uh, the transverse diameter of the skull is uh, increased and in these 3d reconstructed images we can see there is an absence of uh, the coronal suture which is an example for the premature craniosynostosis or premature closure of uh, the sutures and uh, and as i said before it is uh, uh, best to be appreciated in 3d images and if the suture is prematurely closed it is absent completely absent not present it is complete this is normal uh, presence of the suture uh, this is absence complete absence of the suture it is it becomes smooth like this so this is this is a typical example for the premature closure of the coronal suture and this is called brachycephalic configuration of the skull we uh, uh, i showed before a, an, a similar case but uh, the uh, suture where closed is uh, the uh, uh, sagittal suture and the skull take 
dolicocephalic configuration. In in this case, the uh, the prematurely closed is the coronal sutures, and uh, the skull is uh, transverse skull is enlarged, and this is called brachycephaly. In the sagittal suture, the AP diameter of the skull is enlarged, and this is called uh, dolicocephalic. In the coronal suture, the transverse diameter is enlarged, and this is called brachycephalic configuration. The importance here how to dif to diagnose a uh, 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 cranial sinusitis by uh, 3D reconstruction of the CT. This is CT 3D reconstruction is uh, the uh, one of the important way to diagnose a cranial sinusitis. Okay, this is an area of encephalomalacia that is seen surrounded by area of high intensity, which is uh, called uh, 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 representing gliosis and is associated with evacuate irritation of the epsilateral ventricle. So this is area of encephalomalacia usually of a previous insult. And if you see here, this is also the temporal extending here into the temporal pole. This uh, territory or this distribution are territory or, or corresponding to the territory of the middle cerebral artery. So this is an example for the left MCA chronic infarction. And important in the chronic infarction is to see the brainstem. And if we see here the brainstem, we can see that the brainstem here in the same side of the chronic infarction is relatively hypo uh, or relatively small in size in relation to the other uh, side. So this is an example for Wallerian degeneration. And this is important in the spotting exam to, to uh, say that it is a chronic infarction associated with MCA territory in chronic infarction associated with uh, Wallerian de degeneration. Any uh, uh, point or any uh, uh, item that is not mentioned in the, uh, the diagnosis, it will be uh, lowering the degrees because every items of this uh, uh, of this diagnosis has a mark so you have uh, uh, say that it is a chronic infarction it is an a left mca territory and you say you must say that it is associated with uh, epsilateral ullerian degeneration brainstem ullerian degeneration and here in the final case, we can see in this CT of the scan of, uh, of the brain of the child, we can see here there is a hyperdense nodule that is cut along the sub in location, which is a typical example for uh, the tuberous sclerosis. We uh, mentioned tuberous sclerosis in uh, previous uh, cases uh, frequently, but this is an example for the CT appearance. And we can see here this nodule, which is uh, different from uh, the cortex. So this is not a sub gray matter heterotopia. Its signal appearance is not similar to the gray matter. It is more hyperdense. So it is more with a, a tuberous sclerosis. And this is an example for the tuberous sclerosis. This was the end of the lecture. I hope uh, they were interesting cases and uh, good discussion. And uh, thank you very much and meet you soon, inshallah.